Charles, are you ready? If not, let's start first with Chip Towers. Hey, Tamani, uh, great win. Just uh, uh, could, what a furious comeback. Uh, could, could you point to anything in particular that sort of uh, key, sort of spurred you guys on to that uh, run there between making three-pointers and, and, and getting stops. Uh, you just didn't let them come up for air. Uh, I believe it's something Coach said a lot. Um, the most desperate team going to probably win the game. It's just we, we come from two losses. They come from two losses. We just stay true to ourselves. They played a great game, but I feel like we were just really connected on the court. And um, everybody was playing their part. The, the ball was moving like, like it needs to. Um, it was just a great game for us, especially spiritually. Charles, are you there? Okay, let's go ahead and go with Jason Butt and then Mark Weiser. Hey, it's Monty. Um, how pivotal was it, you know, about 13, 14 left in the uh, second half, you guys were able to get into the bonus there. Um, how pivotal was that when you guys were able to get four points from the free throw line in, uh, in just a minute's worth of time to really spark that comeback? I mean, it's really important, especially in the crunch time, um, when as soon as there's a foul, you're able to uh, go to the free throw line. So it's something could say a lot of tight in the room to be able to make them in foul trouble and be able to first out that advantage as soon as there's a foul again on the free throw line. So it's definitely one of the goals we need to like keep on, keep on doing, make sure we attack the ball first and once they're in foul trouble, and then if not, that's how shots get open anyway. So we just need to stay aggressive and make sure we're attacking the top. Tamani, uh, Justin obviously was uh, struggling the last couple of games, you know, uh, on the threes and, and so was the whole team. I mean, what was it like to have you guys in that groove there, uh, you know, and then him uh, responding as he did offensively? Uh, Justin's a great player. I mean, of course, he's not probably not going to be able to play great every time. We got a team where everybody can play good. So. So it's not something that that's going to affect us, I believe, because we're going to be able to pick him up in anything. But he just found his rhythm today. And then I think it's something he can do every game. It just sometimes the rhythm is, is harder to find, depending on how the game is going. But he had a great game today, and we really needed that. And his energy is really important. He's a really important player in the team. So. All right, up next, let's have Mike Griffith and then Tori Heck. Uh, yeah, Timon, you talk about the desperation. Can you just talk about that put back in the end one? I mean, that was a pretty clutch moment in the game for you. Uh, I mean, that's what it is, really, like, make sure we focus on every moment, every little details, and stay focused at any point in time. So on the free throw line, it's something I, I really try to focus on, make sure I'm, like, focused on every, like I just said, details. But it's, like I said, it's desperation. So we just lost two games, and we're hungry and I feel like it's, it's something we have to have even if we win games just be able to win this game more than the other team and it's just really important for us to keep that mentality. Tim, a couple of weeks ago Xavier used that same word kind of desperate about the season um, and winning the games and coach said he doesn't like to put that kind of like bad pressure on y'all. Do you feel like there's a way to keep the pressure in a positive light rather than letting it slip and be stressful? Yeah, like, I mean, we just need to stay, like, focus on what we do and stay true to ourselves and believe the game plan and believe ourselves and believe our teammates. And I think at this point, when there's this trust between everybody, I think we can take on any team and the pressure should not be a problem because the, the trust between each other is, is great. So I think it's something we, we, we started doing better um, going against the games, but we st I feel like we're still learning about ourselves a little bit and every game is a new story and then, we just keep on going, learning every time. All right, up next, let's have Jed May and then Ryan Curley. Uh, hey, Tumani. Uh, in the second half there, Coach went with a lineup that was really small. It had Garcia, KD, Jack Snedder, Severe, and, um, and Justin. And they went on a big run, cut the lead down to one. What was it like seeing that lineup on the court, just really getting things going in the second half when y'all were struggling? Uh, I mean, it's, it's good to watch, good to see. I mean. It's the type of moment when you feel like they need to stay on the court and especially keep the run going. And I think it's the type of moment when everybody's connected, like I said, on the court. And the energy is just very positive on defensive end and offensive end. And that, that's, that was one of those moments at that point. So 
the offense was great, the defense was great, everybody was talking, the connection between all of them was great, so. It's funny, the energy from you guys in the second half looked to to be a lot higher than the last couple of games. Do you think that had a lot to do with the win? I'm sorry, a lot to do with what? Do you think that had a lot to do with the win? I mean, definitely. Um, like, like I said, again, it's who was most desperate, who wanted to go the game more. And I felt like maybe the second half, we were just more focused on the little details, more passionate about, um, I would not say passionate, but more um, more hungry for the win. And, and we just attacked it way harder than we did the first half. And that's how we should, that's how we should play every time. It's, it should not be a question about that, but yeah, that's it. All right, thanks so much, Tamani. Up next, we're gonna be joined by Justin Kyer. All righty, let's start first with Chip Towers and then Mike Griffith. Yeah, how about that second half, Justin? What, uh, uh, you, you guys got, got down real quick by uh, 13. I know that's not the way you wanted to come out of the gate. Then what happened in your – what what uh, what sparked that uh, furious run, particularly uh, defensively? Yeah, um, we just miscommunicated on some crucial uh, possessions in the beginning of the second half. So – that kind of dug us deep. So we knew, you know, we could fix those mistakes. Um, we knew we were going to have great defensive stops if we could fix those mistakes. So that's what we really locked in on um, and, and, and tried not to settle um, offensively and, and, and get them to move um, and get them to foul. So, uh, yeah, we just made a few critical mistakes, you know, at the, in the uh, first of the second half. So, um, you know, we, we, we locked in on that and, and, you know, you saw the outcome of the game, you know, we continued to get stops throughout that, um, throughout that time. Justin, uh, you, you'd been in a, I don't know if I'd call it a slump, but you, you hadn't been hitting shots with the same regularity as usual the last few games. And yet when we asked coach Crean about it, he said he had all the confidence in the world in you. What does it mean when your coach stands behind you like that? And how does a veteran like you play yourself out of that and have a pivotal night like you did tonight? It's the best feeling in the world when a coach, when a coach believes in you and has, you know, all-time high confidence in you as well. So um, it's, it's, I think it's more honestly mental than anything um, in this league. That's how tough this league is though. That's how great this league is. And, you know, that's, you know, every single night, the different scouting and, and you know, how they play you is just all-time different. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a slump that, you know, I try not to get myself down on and worry about too much. You know, I come out and, and do the same routines I do before games, same routines I do before practice. Um, and, and, and not try to change anything. You know, I try to stay consistent with what I do. Um, and I know, you know, things are going to work out. And, you know, when I play bad, other guys step up. So, um, you know, I, I try to not play um, bad every single game. You know, I try to defensively stay into it no matter how my offense is going. But, um, yeah, I mean, we just, you know, we came out today and, and really attacked. Um, so that's how I'm proud of this team for sure. Okay, let's have Charles Odom and then Davis Baker. What did you see as the turning point when you guys were down um, by 13? Was there was there one key that you can point to? Man, I can just say, I, I, I just felt the spirit in the room. Um, we met with a kid after practice or after the game today. I know you guys know him, his name's Tayden. Um, and I saw him before the game, most of the guys didn't and, you know, you know, I won't get into, you know, what's going on, but, you know, that's a great kid. And, and he definitely upped our spirit today. Um, even though we didn't know he was there, you know, I just feel like, you know, we felt that, that, that energy in the room. And on top of that, you know, just locking in on defense, um, being down third, so you can't give up easy buckets and you can't foul. Um, so we continue to lock in on defense and, and, and try to, you know, convert on those, you know, different stops and turnovers. And, you know, it worked for us. And, and I think we can continue to do that going forward. Um, if we play great on defense, I think that helps our offense um, even more. And thanks, the, the fans definitely, you know, showed great love as well. They always did. Uh, hey, Justin, this was y'all's first win uh, over a ranked team this season. Uh, what does it do for the morale and confidence as you guys head towards the end of the season in the SEC tournament? I think it builds our confidence. Um, I think we, we know we can't settle though. You know, when you get games like this, I'm um, against a ranked team, great team, um, great, 
great uh, SEC team and a, by a great coach too, coached by a great coach. So, um, you know, you, you can celebrate this win, you know, um, be happy about this win, but you have to stay locked in because we got a couple more games in the season um, and we can't slip up now. Um, we want to build off this. So, you know, I think we're, we're happy about this win, but we're not satisfied. Okay, let's have Griffin Callahan and then Lance McCurley. Hey, Justin. Uh, it seemed like there was a lot more energy on the floor tonight. What was the mindset of uh, you and of the team coming into this game after Saturday's loss? We just really wanted to attack uh, practice and, 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 and build on the little things that, you know, we didn't do well against those other teams. Um, you know, defensively, just, you know, being a lot more energized, showing hands, communicating better on defense. Um, you know, when a lot of teams in this league can score. They score, you know, we can score as well. So um, the thing that obviously stopped them the scoring is your communication on defense and trying to stop, you know, them for running what they want to run, um, kind of mix up things and, and make them think a little bit. So um, that's the thing. That was just the key is just, you know, locking in on defense, being energized and, and, and going, following through with the game plan that our coaching staff um, has for us. And they did a great job today. Hey, Justin, when you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, when uh, you hit that three to pull uh, the team within two, uh, I don't even think you, when you took the shot, you just kind of looked back and did you knew that was, did you know that one was going in? And when you're, what was your reaction uh, when you, when you uh, turned your head to the sideline? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew it was good. Um, Savir, you know, he found me in transition. Um, he draws so much um, when he attacks the paint. Um, yeah, I, 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 that felt really, really good. So I kind of knew that was going and I wanted us to get us, okay. uh, us energized. You know, I wanted us to, you know, have the people in the room, you know, start getting energized. So um, once that happened, you know, we went on a run as well. So, you know, I just try to, you know, do what I can do, um, you know, knock down the shots I can knock down and, and just help this team continue to get better every single day. All right, and the last two questions, let's go for Palmer Toms and then Jed May. Yeah, Justin, you got off to a big start, you know, had 10 minute, ten points in the first 10 minutes. Uh, how important was that for you and your confidence tonight? I just saw they just um, they gave me some stuff that I like, you know, a lot of um, I felt like I was being hesitant on, you know, attacking the paint um, these last couple of games. Um, so, you know, I had to just get my rhythm back, you know, individually, um, just, you know, not forcing anything, just, you know, giving what the game comes to me. And I think I might have been settling a little bit more on the three point line and not um, making the teams, you know, um, have to know that, they, you know, you can guard the three, but you have to also guard the dribble. So um, I just try to be aggressive. Um, and, and that's, you know, what the outcome was in, you know, the first 10 minutes was just, you know, they gave me some lanes that I liked and, you know, just continued to go with it. Justin, for about a six minute stretch there in the second half, coach went with a lineup that had you, Severe, KD, Jackson, and uh, Andrew Garcia on the court. Um, I imagine that might be the first time that lineup's been on the court together all year. Just what was clicking for that lineup over that six minute stretch? You know, you cut the lead from 11 down to one. I mean, it was pretty hard to probably to match up with just because you got some bigs. So, you know, we were uh, pretty small. So we have to rebound and, and box out. But that's a great defensive group as well. Not saying anybody else on the, you know, on that bench isn't great defensively because we all are. But that's a great defensive group, and and we were, you know, coming up with big stops. Um, and offensively, you know, they had to guard our quick guards, you know. So, um, you know, coach has his has his, you know, coach is very smart, so he knows, you know, you know what he's doing, and and, and he knows, you know, what he can do to win. So, you know, we trust him, and and you know, us five on the court, you know, he's got to be dogs and, and and get this win. So that's what we did. All right, thanks so much, Justin. And we will be joined shortly by Coach Crean. Hey, Coach, terrific win. Uh, particularly uh, that that run in the second half, uh, pretty unusual lineup you had on the floor. Uh, just just what was the what was your thinking there? Uh, was there anything in particular you were trying to make happen when you you guys had that kind of long extended run with a pretty small lineup? We needed to change momentum. Uh, we needed to change. It wasn't about positions uh, as much then as it just was about energy and toughness and movement. And um, anytime we have Jackson and KD in there, they bring an energy level and they bring a competitiveness level that I think helps the guys. And uh, 
So it, it was it was a makeshift lineup, not based on who's guarding who, but who's going to fight, compete, get on that glass. Uh, and in Jackson's case, the way he steps up and draws charges, um, th those are really, really important things. And so we basically played about eight guys in that span and, and um, we were able to figure it out, which this, after, the, after the timeout we took, I thought they really regrouped. I thought they changed. And uh, then we started to have some success again. Coach, what can, uh, what can this win do for your team's momentum uh, when you face uh, further situations like that 13? Well, I think, I think we've come from behind before, um, but this is a really, really good team that's ranked for a reason. And I think to be able to come back like that, because it, it wasn't like they were sabotaging their experience, right? Like they're playing hard. They, they weren't self-inflicting their own wounds. They were, they were really going. And so we, we had to earn it. And um, I think that was, that was really, really important uh, that we kept that pressure on. Uh, they're really good. I mean, they're really good. And I know they're missing Tillman, but they're even faster when he's not in there. And Conzo's a heck of a coach. But um, I, think it, I, I think the way we came back and got the momentum, uh, the fact that we did it against such a good team, the fact that some guys were really, really on the attack, like Justin, KD, Severe, Andrew, uh, those things can only hopefully help us because – uh, we, we're fully aware of how good Florida is as we go in there on Saturday. All right, up next, let's have Mark Weiser and then Mike Griffith. Tom, uh, you, your team seemed to be pretty locked in in terms of playing with desperation. I think uh, one of your two players mentioned that. Uh, how important was that, you know, given, uh, you know, the opponent and, and how... Uh, well, I think, you know, I use, I use the term desperate. You know, the, the, the term I heard a long time ago from Doug Collins, which I've used for so long, is you got to play blue-collar desperate. But I'm not sure uh, we just say we've got to be tough. We, the, the, we had to be extremely aggressive against them. We had to be tough because they are. And, and the team that was most committed to the hustle game was going to win the game. And, and that's where the desperate comes in. And um, it's not desperate that we need to win. It's desperate that we need to compete at a higher level and a better level than what we have. And if you do that, if you do that, then, then you're putting yourself in position to win. So that's what was most important about that. And I thought we had a lot of contributions, five guys in double figures, Jackson with nine. Uh, we had 16 deflections in the first half, which was not good. We have 46 for the game. KD gets 14 for the game. That's 30 deflections more. That, that's, that's, that says a lot about our defense. We had eight, three stops in a row. Uh, and we had six, three scores in a row. And when you hit over seven in both of those, it, it's tough to lose. And we have, but it's tough to lose. And, and, uh, because the whole key is that consistency. You know, once you get momentum back, can you stay consistent with it? And I thought our guys did a good job of that. Coach, could you comment on just the, the, the poise tonight? I mean, you got obviously not out of the woods. You got a trip to Florida and a really good LSU team coming up. But just, just the poise this team's showing at this stage of the season? Well, they were, they were, they were locked in. And, and again, the game uh, Saturday, I've said this before, but I mean – they have to be reminded, okay, listen, we just won three in a row. All right. We just won five out of seven. We came back on Tennessee. We didn't play very well at the beginning. It's a 14 point game. And I reminded of this one time at a timeout and it, it, when, it, when it was 13. All right. We, we, we missed a three that we shouldn't have taken. We were in the bonus. We have the bonus tonight at the 1307 mark of the, of the uh, I think it was 1307 of the uh, second half, but cause we knew that was going to be a key part of the game. So let's make sure we stay with that. It wasn't about taking a jump shot. It wasn't about trying to make a move. It was about getting to the rim. And we had just been in this position the other day. We miss two shots and have a turnover. They score three straight times. That's where the margin for error is not real high for us. So we needed to really make sure that we were good and solid. And if we were going to come back, we couldn't be beating ourselves while we were coming back. We had to, we had to trust what was happening and get ourselves into that bonus. And I think we might have been at two or three team fouls at that point. And then to get it as quick as we did in the bonus, that, that, that's a good recipe for us because now we can set our defense and it helps keep them out of transition. Quick follow, can you comment on Justin Kyrie? He's a guy you told us you believed in. He really oh, absolutely. That, obviously. Justin was extremely locked in. And uh, uh, I would say with PJ and Justin, we've, we've put a little extra focus on them the last few days, at least I have. And, uh, and it's basically reminders, reminding them what they're capable of. Justin, making sure that he's getting to the basket, playing assertively. Uh, PJ trusting his shot 
there's always a few little technical things you need to remind guys of when they're at their best. But sometimes it's just a feel and a spirit that they've got to have and that they know they're capable. And those guys, Justin and PJ, you know, I've coached guys and coached teams that didn't have teams or didn't have guys on the team full of guys that really tried hard or even they could, they could, they could live and die or they, they didn't live and die with the losses. Those two kids and, and Andrew's the same way. Those two kids overthink it. They overwork. They really want to be good. And sometimes you got to back that off too. And you just got to get them back to, to, uh, to square one on what's most important for them. And it starts with their spirit. It starts with their confidence, building that confidence back up, not because I say it, but because I remind them of what they've done and what they're capable of. And then we continue to help them work to get there. All right, let's have Jason Butt and then Ryan Curley. Hey, Coach, you, you mentioned the getting into the bonus. Um, you know, when you're at the, in the bonus that early and then you get four points from the free throw line within a minute, I mean, just how, how much does that change the complexion of, of being able to come back? Uh, obviously it does. I mean, because you, you're not only putting them in foul trouble, all right, you're not only, you're not only getting uh, two points potentially right there, you're able to set your defense. You're able to, they have to go against five guys. And, and that's so important, especially for a team that, that runs in transition like they do. And, um, but we, our guys did a better job. We made better adjustments. We guarded Kobe Brown better in the second half, in the post. We got away from our game plan a little bit. And, uh, but we got that back. And uh, I, think, I think the adjustments that the guys made getting back to what was most important on the defensive end with the pressure, with the fronting of the post, uh, we did a better job challenging the shots. Um, and that created some runouts for us and, and attacking the rim got us to the foul line. Hey coach, how much do you think your comeback in this game, uh, compared to not being able to come back the last two second halves came down to execution? Uh, I would say, yeah, execution is always going to be a part of it. No, no question about it. it. It, every game is different. And, and, um, we weren't giving them a lot of live ball turnovers, you know, which is huge. So. Execution, obviously, is a big part of it. Uh, putting multiple stops together is a big part of that. Being active defensively. You know, th this past Saturday, we weren't as active defensively as we needed to be. We weren't as active defensively in the first half against Tennessee as we needed to be, but we picked it up. And uh, you know, we don't have any choice but to be that way because that's the way the game's got to be played, and that's when we're at our best. All right, and the last two questions, we're going to have Tori Heck and then Griffin Callahan. Coach, you mentioned the phrase blue collar desperate. Can you elaborate on what that means to you? Because I feel like it really embodies what you guys, how you guys play. I, I, it's, it's getting on the floor. It's drawing charges. It's winning 50-50s. It's, it's, it's attacking the rim. Uh, it's not looking for a foul call. All right? It's not worrying or whining when something doesn't go your way. It, it's, you're locked in. I mean, blue collar, uh, blue collar people, um, if they're having a bad day, nobody cares, right? And that's what it is in basketball. They got to they got to show up and they got to go to work. They've got to show up and they've got to be at work to feed their families. And and they don't get to have bad days. Well, you know what? That's where we're at in college basketball right now too. None of this has promised us, uh, let alone you know being in a in a program like this. We can never take it for granted. But more than ever, you can never take a day for granted in a, in a COVID year like this, with as many games are getting canceled left and right. And and, and tomorrow is not promised so you've got to do the very best you can do inside of that day and and if they're going to be successful in life it isn't going to be because they were passive and laid back right so it's going to be because you know they put their hard hat on so to speak and 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 they played harder and, the, and they were really committed to playing with one another that that's what you you can't have just a couple of guys that are blue collar a couple of guys that are really locked in you got to have a team full and I think our guys especially in the second half did a much better job of that I know you said Missouri was maybe quicker without Tillman on the floor, but do you think his absence I gave I should, you maybe I a slight advantage? Quick. I shouldn't have said quick, just faster getting up the floor. I, I shouldn't have said quick because he, he can really play and he blocks shots. I, didn't, I, I interrupted. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, um, do you think that absence uh, maybe gave you guys an advantage on the glass tonight? Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's hypothetical. I don't know. He wasn't here, so we'll never know. Um, we just had to be aggressive, and uh, that's the most important thing. But – uh, they're a really good team, and hopefully he comes back for them the way that he's capable of and has the senior year that he's, that he's fully capable of having. And I'm a big fan of what Missouri does. I love the way they play. That's why it's extra special to get a win like that because you know you got to earn it. 
they're not going to give you the game. You've got to truly earn it. And uh, proud of how they did that, our guys. All right, thanks so much, guys. Right. Thank you. We'll have a recording to you shortly.